Hi, and welcome to the third of four videos uh, for Math 126 Exam 1 Review. First two videos, we saw problems 1 through 10. This third video, 11 through 15. And then finally, the last video will be the last five problems, 16 through 20. So number 11 is another solve the equation problem. We have 10 over x. 11 over 10 over x minus 12 over x minus 3 plus 4 equals 0. So in this kind of problem, what's going to be our methodology to solve it? Well, we're going to find the LCD, and then we're going to multiply every single piece of the equation on both sides of the equal sign by that LCD. So my LCD would be what? My LCD would be x times x minus 3. So that gets multiplied by every single piece. So when I multiply it by the first piece, the x's cancel, and I'm left with 10 times x minus 3. Minus, so we have to be careful here when we're doing this, make sure we don't lose track of that minus sign. So what do we have here? x minus 3 is canceled, so I'm just left with 12 times x. And then plus 4 times x times x minus 3 equals, multiply this on the right, 0 times anything is 0, so we still end up with 0 on the right side. So this guy here, x times x minus 3, if we distribute that x, what do we get? We get x squared minus 3x. So simplify this, if I distribute my 10, I get 10x minus 30 minus 12x, and then distribute the 4 here. So 4 times x squared, so plus 4x squared. 4 times negative 3x is minus 12x. And again, this all equals 0. Arrange this thing in descending order, so I have 4x squared. 10x minus 12x is negative 2x, minus another 12 is minus 14x, and then minus 30 is 0. So I need to try to factor this, use zero property rule if I can, if not use quadratic formula. But the first thing I can do is divide everything by 2 to make the numbers a little nicer. So I get what? 2x squared minus 7x minus 15 is 0. And then see if this thing will factor. So I have 2x and x. I can do 5 and 3. And because 1's plus, 1's minus, I'm going to get minus 5 and plus 3. So if I check it, I need a negative 7x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 plus 3 is minus 7. So it does factor. I can use zero property rule. 2x plus 3 is 0. x minus 5 is 0. So subtract 3. I get 2x is negative 3. Divide by 2. x is negative 3 halves. And over here, x is equal to positive 5. Add a 5 to both sides. So this might be our answer, but what do we have to do? Well, just as when we had the radical equation, we had to check. This, we have a rational equation. I have a variable in the denominator. So I need to make sure whatever answer I got is not going to create a problem if I were to plug it into the original. So my biggest concern is what? x can't be 0, because that will make this denominator 0. And x can't be 3, because that would make this one. Well, I don't have a 0 or a 3, so therefore I know both of these answers are going to work out for me. Okay, so, number 12, another solve. This time we're trying to solve for x and y. So this is one of our proportion problems. 
I have x plus 7 over 2y minus 6 equals 10 over y plus 2 equals 8y. So this problem, this is our heads up to us, it's a proportion problem, because what? We have two equal signs. This is about the only time we're going to deal with any problems that have two equal signs in the same problem. So what we want to do in this case is pick the two pieces that have just one variable in it, and it's these guys. This has only y, this has only y. So I want to use those two. This one has an x in it, so I don't want to use him yet. So if I just look at these two, 10 over y plus 2 is 8 over y, I can cross multiply and solve for y. So if I do that, I get 10 times y is 10y equals 8 times y plus 2. And again, I'm just cross multiplying. So I get 10y is equal to 8y plus 2 subtract 8y from both sides. I get 2y is equal to 2, so therefore y is equal to 1. So I have one of my answers, but I still need my answer for x. So how do I do that? Well, I use the first equation. So x plus 7 over 2 times y, which I just figured out is 1, minus 6 is equal to, and now I can choose either one of these. I'm going to choose the last one because there's no calculations that have to go with it. I just plug in 1. So this is equal to 8 over 1. So if I simplify this, this is x plus 7 over 2 times 1 is 2, minus 6 is negative 4 equals 8 over 1. Uh, did I go oh, hold on, I goofed something up. You're probably all screaming at the screen here. So I have to distribute this 8 to both pieces. And I only distributed it to 1. Sorry, be careful with your math here. So this should be what? 8y plus 16. So this should be a 16, so then y is, divide, 2y is 16, divide by 2, y should be 8. So that means when I plug these back in, I get an 8 there, and I get an 8 here. So plug it in, x plus 7 over 2 times y, which is 8, minus 6, and I'm still going to use this one, 8 over 8. So this denominator now, 2 times 8 is 16, minus 6 is 10. So 8 over 8 is what? That's just 1. So I have x plus 7 over 10 equals 1. So if I multiply the, both sides by 10, they cancel out here, I get x plus 7. 10 times 1 is 10. So subtract 7 from both sides, x is equal to 3. Yeah, that looks better. So y is 8, x is 3. Sorry about that little math error there. Um, but yeah, be careful with your math, and then everything should work out okay for you. So that's number 12. Number 13. Solving a rational inequality. And we have to put our answer in interval notation. So we have 2x plus 6 over x minus 2 is less than 0. So I want to know what values can I pick for x plug it into that fraction, and it's going to be a value less than zero. So, what do we have to do here? If there was a number on this side, I would have to move the number over, change it to a fraction, combine it. If there was just a number on the left side, I would have to change that to a fraction, combine it. I want to get to a starting point where this is a fraction. It already is. So then what I do is I set the numerator 
2x plus 6 equal to 0. And the denominator, x minus 2, is equal to 0. These are going to create the breakpoints on my table. So I get what? If I subtract 6, 2x is negative 6. Divide by 2, so x is negative 3. That's one of my breakpoints. And then x minus 2 is 0, which means x is equal to positive 2. So I'm going to build my table. I go negative infinity up to one breakpoint, which is negative 3. Then it goes up to 2, and put these in increasing order if you have multiple ones, up to infinity. And so with these pieces here, I'll just sort of draw my lines down to break up the table. Now we're going to pick numbers to test into the numerator and the denominator. So start by picking numbers in this interval. Well, something between negative and infinity and negative 3, I'm going to say negative 10. That will be my test point. Something between negative 3 and 2, well, I'll use 0. That's easy enough. And something between 2 and infinity, I'll use positive 10. So what I want to know is, in each interval, is this positive or negative, and is this positive or negative, and then I can determine if the entire ratio is positive or negative. So for 2x plus 6, if I plug in negative 10, I get negative 20 plus 6, that's a negative number. So I'm not really so much concerned what's the number, just whether or not it's positive or negative. If I plug in 0, I get positive 6, so that's a positive number. And if I plug in positive 10, or any number really, it's going to be a positive number. And as soon as it switches from positive to negative, it's always going to stay that in these rows. And the last row is going to be what? The last row should be alternating back and forth. So for x minus 2, in the first interval, negative 10, if I plug in negative 10, that gives me a negative number. If I plug in 0, that gives me a negative number. If I plug in 10, that gives me a positive number. So that's the numerator and the denominator separately. Together, 2x plus 6 over x minus 2, well, in this interval, it's going to be what? It's going to be a negative number over a negative number. Negative divided by negative is positive. In this interval, positive divided by negative is negative. Positive divided by positive is positive. And you can see the bottom one alternates, positive to negative to positive. So once I have these intervals and I know if that value is positive or negative, I need to go back to my main problem, look at the inequality, and I want this thing what? I want it to be less than 0. So that means what? Less than 0 is negative. So I want any, any interval that's negative, which is negative 3 up to 2. So from negative 3 to 2, it's a negative value. But then I have to figure out, do I consider these points? Do I include them? Or do I not include them? So plug them back in. If I put in negative 3, what do I get here? Neg 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus 6 is 0, over negative 5, which is 0. Is 0 less than 0? The answer is no, which means I do not include it, so it gets a parenthesis. If this thing said less than or equal to, then I would have had what? Then I would have had a bracket because 3 is included. So that would get a bracket. But for our answer, we're only concerned with the parentheses because we can't use 3. It would make it equal to 0, which is not less than 0. And how about the 2? Well, the 2 makes the denominator 0. We can't have that, so we're certainly not allowed to use 2. So my answer for this one would be negative 3 to 2, parentheses on both sides. If this thing had said this whole ratio is greater than 0, then I would want what? I would want this interval and this interval. And how do I write that in interval notation? Well, it's what? It's negative infinity up to negative 3. 
And we know we can't use negative 3, so that gets a parenthesis. And then because there's this gap, we have to do union 2, which again is still not included, up to positive infinity. So if we have intervals that have a little break in them, we need to use this union notation. But again, for this problem, it was less than zero, so our answer is simply negative 3 to 2 with the parentheses. 14. So 14, we want to find the center and the radius of a circle if we're given an equation. So the equation is x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 4y minus 95 is 0. So we're told that's an equation of the circle. What's its center? What's its radius? So in order to do this, we have to what? We have to get this in the standard form first. And I can do that by completing the square twice. So I'm going to first group my x pieces. So x squared plus 2x. And then my y pieces, y squared plus 4y. And I'm going to get the 95 to the other side. So I'm adding 95 to the left and the right which means this whole thing equals 95. Now let's complete the square in each piece. So for the x portion, my b is equal to positive 2. 1 half of b is positive 1. 1 half of b squared is 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm going to add 1 in here, but I can't just add it on one side and not the other. So I have to do what? I have to add 1 on the right side as well. And then similarly with the y pieces, my b is equal to 4. 1 half of b is equal to 2. So 1 half of b squared is 2 squared, which is 4. So I'm adding 4 to the y pieces, so I also need to add 4 to the right side. Now that I have this, I can write this as a perfect square, which is what? x plus 1 squared. And then the b portion, I mean, sorry, the y portion is my 1 half b, which was 2. So this is y plus 2 squared equals 95 plus 1 is 96 plus 4 is 100. Now it's in standard form, so the center is the opposite of what I see here. So it's minus 1, minus 2. And the radius is the square root of what's on the other side. So it's the square root of 100, which is 10. So that means this is a circle with its center at negative 1, negative 2, with a radius of 10. So that answers that question. So 15, and again, if you need to pause it, look back through. I know I'm going through this stuff pretty quick, but I figure it's because you have a chance. You can go back and uh, watch the videos again if you need to, if it went a little bit too fast. Or you can always ask in class or ask office hours. But 15 is that crazy problem we have. The given that the tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the adjoining radius at the point of contact, find the equation of the tangent to the circle, x squared plus y squared is 25 at the point 3, negative 4. So what this is saying is we have a circle with the center at the origin with a radius of 5, and at the point 3, negative 4 down here, we have a tangent line, and we're trying to figure out what's the equation of that tangent line. And we also, from the information, so if this is my radius to the circle, these two, the radius and the tangent line are perpendicular to each other. So this is the point 3, negative 4. 
So if I can find out the slope of the radius, which is starting at the origin, 0, 0, I can do, how do I find a perpendicular line? It's the negative reciprocal of the slope. So if I find out the slope of the radius, take the negative reciprocal that gives me the slope of the tangent line, and then I can use the point, use point-slope formula to figure out the equation of the line. So a few steps we have to do here. So first, m is our notation for slope. So let's say mr, the slope of the radius. And to figure out a slope, if we have two points, it's what? y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So if I call this one x1 and y1, and x2, y2, for the purpose of this formula, I have what? Negative 4 minus 0 over 3 minus 0. So I get negative 4 thirds. That's the slope of the radius. So the slope of the tangent line then would be what? The negative reciprocal of this. So this is negative, it becomes positive. Instead of 4 over 3, it's 3 over 4. So now, using point slope formula, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And it doesn't mean the x1, y1 that I labeled in the picture. My x1, y1 is the point that's on that line. And the point that's on that line is 3, negative 4. So I'm going to use those as my point, y minus y1. So y minus a negative 4 is the slope, 3 fourths, times x minus my x point, which is 3. So distribute and simplify. y minus a negative 4 is y plus 4. Distribute the 3 fourths, you get 3 fourths x minus 9 fourths. So we want this in y equals mx plus b form. So subtract 4. So if I'm subtracting 4, that's like subtracting 16 fourths. Because for these two fractions, I need to have the same denominator. So they cancel out here, I get y is equal to 3 fourths x. Negative 9 fourths minus 16 fourths is negative 25 fourths. And that's it for 15. So the equation of the tangent line adjacent to that circle at the point 3, negative 4 has this as its equation. So come on back, we'll do video 4 which will wrap up the review problems for exam 1.